find stuff in the blockchain space. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of transactions flowing, a lot of mutations to the database, and we want to find stuff. How do you find stuff? There's many ways to do that, and historically, you've had a native API that was provided by Nodios called the History API. That History API provided you, it's deprecated today, but you know, there's replacements for that. It provided you with a, a list of your historical transactions. It gave you all the transactions that you signed, and also all transactions where some smart contract notified your account. Now, you might have noticed that there's a lot of spam caused by that because any contract can notify you without your consent, right? So it makes the history API quite full of spam and difficult to navigate sometimes. There's a lot of things you don't really need. So when you're building a UI and you want to have a list of your latest DEX transaction or your latest something, what you, the only thing you could query with the history API was your transaction and then you need to download them all with the whole payload and then sift through them on the client which is heavy and you might be scrolling through a hundred or a thousand spammy transactions which you're not interested in. So we saw that early at Diffuse and we decided to do something about it and we thought the best way to query the history of the blockchain is with, is with a search engine. So we built Diffuse Search. So how does the Diffuse Search work? Well, the Diffuse Search is actually indexing all of the blockchain history. All of the data, all the blocks, all the time, and in real time. And we've created a special dedicated database for blockchains that index right now EOS and that goes inside your actions. So for example, you have a transfer, you have from, to, quantity, and a memo. Well, we're indexing approximately 30 uh, properties inside those uh, transactions. So if you want to see like what transfers were made from me to you on that token, you can actually craft a small query and then we'll search the whole blockchain just for that. It's a lot easier than sifting through pages and pages and selecting that on your client. And what we have also with the GraphQL subscription features we're pulling out today is you're able to use that search syntax to stream incoming blocks. So it's sort of filtered in real time. It'll notify you if things just arrive that match that query. But also, and that's a new feature of the GraphQL interface, we're gonna, able, we're gonna be able to navigate forks for you. So remember the micro forks thing, we're gonna link it below. If there's a micro fork, you wanna be alerted this transaction that matched does not match anymore, it has been reverted. So we're gonna send you in the GraphQL uh, payload and make sure you select that undo is going to be true if it's an undo you want to remove it from your database you want to take it out from the ui and uh that will mean it was not there anymore most probably it's been re-injected in the blockchain by the next producer so you'll get it back in a few in, in a few milliseconds right when there's a chain reorganization like that but basically with that with that stream there, it's bulletproof. You'll know the truth of the blockchain and you will be able to offer that security and guarantee to your users. Now, we've worked really hard to be able to satisfy the most basic and the most uh, used use case, like feeding UIs with historical data while listening to the future. And with the GraphQL interface and the new cursor that we built, you're able to do just that. You can query with that language, be very specific as to what you want to get, get historical, paginated historical things, or even streaming, so you can stream the whole blockchain in one Swift, if you want, uh, through the, 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 the GraphQL subscription, and use the cursor that we now send at each response, and use the cursor to do a forward search that then goes and navigates into the future. Right, so you can search backwards and forwards with the same cursor and always be aware of what's the reality, historical or real time of the blockchain. So, you know, to do that, we needed to build something that didn't exist. We're really proud of that. And if you want to try it out, the best way to do it is through the GraphQL interface that we're going to link down in the docs. And I hope you're going to have a lot of fun querying the blockchain and I salute you.